why were you disappointed in say a dr manmohan singh at that time there was economic reforms happening india was the second generation reforms if you want to call them the nuclear deal had been signed with america india was opening up do you think that dr manmohan singh could not carry the narrative was that to a large extent responsible for mr modi's rise as a communicator as a young techie <laughs> i was in the us at that time and i recall uh, being part of a whole movement there to create uh, favorable conditions for the nuclear deal we all you know wrote letters to the local congressman didn't matter that it was a congress government or whoever yeah. was a government it was a big thing for india hmm. that the nuclear deal would you know uh, happen Uh, so in that sense uh, all of us uh, you know related to that moment but then it became very apparent that there was a basic fundamental contradiction uh, between dr manmohan singh as the prime minister and sonia gandhi and the national advisory council and their entire agenda be it in crt textbooks be it forest rights be, you know in the name of rights they created uh, you know this entire culture of entitlement uh, it, which i think uh, was completely running counter to the kind of aspirational change that many of us wanted in india and then of course dr manmohan singh's communication abilities were uh, when very very mediocre uh, let's put it that way hmm. he was not a public speaker he was very uh, uncomfortable he didn't inspire confidence and then of course what happened with the 2g scam and you know the radia tapes all of that i think added up uh, hmm. to create the perfect set of conditions for a modi to rise how do you uh, see uh, mr modi's communication skills if you were to compare it with prime ministers of the past it'd be unfair to compare mr modi's <laughs> skills with say a uh, dr manmohan singh right. but if you were to compare it with mr vajpayee where would you put them as you rightly pointed out of course mr vajpayee had this literary rhetorical flourish in his speeches uh, which uh, is you know a different genre of communication by itself very poetic and it's very uplifting but then he and mr modi share that emotional connect i was here in delhi when the the 13 day vajpay government fell and that was the first time i think he took a decision that the speech will be shown live the confidence motion on doordarshan and i recall that speech the way he delivered it, that emotional i mean you just felt sorry for what was happening and i mean i could see it in the faces of everyone watching that speech yeah. that day uh, so so that is one thing that you know uh, both mr modi and mr vajpay share uh, mr nehru Uh, would be again comparable in terms of uh, you know the the rhetorical uh, also very intellectual arguments hmm. in his speeches uh, but then you see when i listen to nehru's speeches you know late 50s early 60s you can see that age has started catching up with him hmm. his speeches were getting boring the china debacle yeah, china that delivered such a body blow on yeah. uh, pandit nehru so we found two television interviews of his one was 1958 the other was just a few days before he, i think a week or 10 days before he passed away uh, his last television interview and and you can actually see this uh, the effect of the china thing because he is more philosophical very introverted in fact you see a similar change in indira gandhi speeches younger indira gandhi you know late 60s very different in her speeches she ends it with bharat mata ki jai i mean imagine a congress prime minister today saying bharat mata ki jai yeah indira gandhi says that in, in her independence day speech hmm. uh, then you uh, you have the emergency era speeches of indira gandhi and you can see that uh, she is angry a lot of anger a lot of bitterness uh, then something happens in 1980s i think is perhaps uh, sanjay gandhi is passing away because hmm. she is distracted is uh, irritable uh, she is not communicating she is yeah. just rambling and and you can make that different then we forget narsimha rao very very clever communicator makes a very very compelling argument where he talks about the need for economic reform and of course he is a scholarly prime minister again hmm. right and he is not a people's prime minister click here to watch the full episode